think the general thought is ADHD is something that we have. Um, it's classified as a disorder, it's a deficit, it's a neurological problem that needs to be addressed with pharmaceuticals and other behavioral changes. And I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I think it's a poor way to frame it for an individual. It does cause difficulties. So what I'm about to say, don't take this to mean that it's not a problem for people and they don't need to address it because they absolutely do. But in my own life, and I've talked to a lot of people, I don't see ADHD as something I have. It's not a cold, it's gonna go away. It's not a broken arm, it's gonna go away. It's something that I actually am. It's not gonna change. I am six feet tall and I'll be that way, you know, basically forever and I am ADHD, it's a neurological brain function difference and I will have that difference my entire life. I don't see it as a deficit and a disorder. I understand that the medical community needs to call it that to prescribe stimulant medication and, and that sort of thing and I'm fine with that. But in terms of my own belief pattern and the way I see myself, I don't see myself as a deficit person or a disordered person. You know, another play, my way I might describe this is I'm challenged art-wise. I can barely draw stick figures, okay? My daughter can paint these beautiful things. I can barely do stick figures. I don't consider myself disordered. That, that's a weakness. And, and, and if, if that was incredibly valued in society, I would seriously be at a disadvantage. But, you know, artists do their thing. Other people do their thing. I'm decently good at math, so I'm in a company that deals with a lot of math and that sort of stuff, and I fit just fine, right? So I think ADHD can be a problem, or not a problem depending on the environment we're in and the way we, the consciousness that we bring to the table. And my consciousness brings, I'm not disordered. I'm, I'm a little different and, and everybody is. There's no, there's no normal, there's no neurotypical, you know, you hear this kind of stuff. Everybody's different, it's a spectrum, but we have these common threads. And people with ADHD do have a common thread of difficulty activating on the knowledge and skill that they have. Frankly, I feel blessed to have the ADHD. It has caused some really severe problems in my life, but it's also given me some abilities that, that I don't think you can learn them. I don't think you can get them any other way. And people who have ADHD have these wide peripheral views of the world. They, there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, and, and again, before the, before the service providers write me a bunch of letters, <laughs> I think a lot of the benefits that I see in ADHD are not directly because of the ADHD, they're because of having lived a life with ADHD. I consider myself pretty resilient, I'm pretty resourceful, I'm pretty creative. And in some ways, you have to be when you have ADHD because you, you're a square peg, round holes, not fitting as you're growing up and you have to learn how to fit in. So while somebody, let's take Russell Barkley, would say that's not an ADHD issue, this resilience that you have, I believe it came from living a life which was difficult because of the ADHD. Another reason I look at it and you can argue this both ways, but the way I look at it is I am ADHD because that puts the, the locus of control in my life, right? If I, if I have a disorder, if I have a deficit, if I've got a neurological problem that's across the lifespan, I'm actually in some way defining myself as a victim, okay? This outside world gave me this problem and now I can't do anything about it, et cetera, et cetera. If I take all the medication, do all the therapy, I might be almost as good as somebody else. I don't buy into that. I just like, I'm not very good at art. I can barely draw stick figures, but I am good at math. Those are just aspects of who I am. Some of those things are good and I'm not gonna try and make a living as an artist, but I can make a living in a business that, that has a lot of math involved in it. So I think we learn how to use what we have and what we're capable of. And ADHD definitely has some drawbacks. If we don't manage those drawbacks, they're gonna destroy our life. I mean, people with ADHD, that happens to them all the time, um, frequently. Um, and, and frequently it's cyclical, it'll be like a roller coaster type life. On the other hand, if you manage your ADHD issues, then there's a whole host of positive outgrowths from having ADHD, such as resilience and creativity and, and a, you know, a whole bunch of things, a calmness in a storm, for example, um, that may not be a directly ADHD, but they're created by living a life with ADHD. And so I think that's, that's a huge positive side that is frequently missed by researchers who are researching mainly for pharmaceutical companies to find things that can be managed over a long period of time. And I'm not against that. I, I use Adderall myself. I think it's fantastic for certain things, but there's a whole other aspect of ADHD on the positive side 
that people will do far better in their lives if they if they keep that top of mind. You know, when you're happy, it turns on all the learning centers in your brain. If you're depressed because you're broken, because you've got this deficit disorder thing, if you're a victim, you're not gonna be able to access your entire brain. So that, that's, that's my take on it. I, I believe that I am ADHD. It doesn't define me, but it is a characteristic of who I am and it will always be there.